Welcome back to Hope From Home, the show where we bring you conversations of hope from our home to yours. Pope Francis asked us to celebrate this week as the Laudato Si week, so that's what we're going to do. Hope From Home, Laudato Si edition. Jermaine Bagnall learns all about a parish that is running a community garden. Luisa Florentine has a conversation with McLean Capshu about the importance of sustainable fashion. And Matteo Cioffi speaks with the coordinator of the sector of ecology and creation at the Vatican de Castri for promoting integral human development, who gives us several Laudato Si lessons during the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, they'll all tell us where they're finding hope from our home to yours. Thank you so much for being with us here today. You are the lovely yes. lady behind a Catholic convo on Instagram. So good to yes. see you. Yeah, no, thank you so much for having me, ladies. <laughs> um, so your digital digital ministry there, um, I think really echoes the themes behind Laudato Si really well. Um, mm -hmm. So what inspired you to vocalize um, sustainable living and um, slow fashion in your uh, platform? I would say that it's a number of things that kind of occurred in my life. Um, through exposure um, with the use of documentaries and just knowledge, like God really desires for us to know as much as we can um, about his creation while having this like unfailing trust in him. And so some of the documentaries and articles that I was reading really opened my eyes to some of the actual horrors of fast fashion um, and just the way that our human dignity is not being upheld, um, mostly the workers who are creating this fast fashion. Consuming became a huge idol for me and became something that I used to define who I was and to make myself more desirable and more wanted um, when really just being a beloved daughter was my identity. And so I started this journey of um, going more towards sustainable fashion and thrifting more and just using what has already been created. So what are some of the changes that you've made since um, actively switching to um, a sustainable lifestyle. Taking the time to go through what we have and use what we already have mm -hmm. um, and seeing if, yeah, this is a piece that can build my closet um, because the idea is that we consume less um, and we, yeah. we are able to pay more so that we can um, give workers the correct wage that actually upholds their dignity as a human being. Um, and so, yeah, starting with thrift stores, um, being a, a little more conscious about um, how much plastic I'm buying, trying to reuse things more than once, um, and making those tiny switches will actually help you to become more intentional because this is really just living the gospel right like yeah. and so mm -hmm. i'm going to take care of it and i'm going to make sure that it comes from a company that um, is doing good in the world and that is respecting their workers when i when i thrift i like the idea of kind of um picking up garments that you know tell a story too right and so Absolutely. um funnily enough like i was just reflecting on that this morning and i was like isn't that neat too that like through clothes we can um stay connected as the body of christ you know like in a way we're exactly. kind of like passing on um our previously loved clothes onto someone else so i just love that idea um, so you um, have a really close uh, relationship to the little way, St. Therese, um, the yes. little flower, um, yes. and you talk a lot about your daughterhood um, to our God. So how do you think these mm -hmm. complement um, our call to be stewards of creation? Yeah, so she talks about the Eucharist and is saying that Jesus does not come down from heaven each day in order to remain in a golden saborium. 
but to find another heaven, the heaven of our souls in which he takes such delight. And so this idea that while we're receiving Jesus right now, probably spiritually um, in our spiritual communion, and once we can return to the Eucharist physically, that needs to change us. It needs to completely change everything about our lives, um, which includes, yeah, the way that we care for others, um, the companies that we invest in and support. Um, yeah, the, the vulnerable that we stand up for, being pro-life, um, supporting ethical companies that um, yeah, support their work as well. And uh, Therese had such a good handle on what it means to be a daughter. And if, if we know our full identity as a daughter, everything can flow from that. That was something that my missionary always taught me my senior year of college. Um, and so purchasing things that actually make me feel like a daughter and reflect that identity. Um, yeah, so those are just a couple of Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that quote. I love that. As you were saying that, um, you know, she talks a lot about um, being um, being little and like kind of, mm -hmm. you know, in, in our littleness, like we we um, open up more space for God to, to be in our lives. Um, and so I think also in this, um, in our in our small little practices of um, living sustainably and of being intentional and mindful of what, of what we consume, of how we consume it, of mm -hmm. who we're supporting, you know, these little steps, I think, uh, all, all accumulate. Yeah, yeah they, mm -hmm. they, you know, they, they glorify God in these little ways. So, yeah. Um, so do you have any final thoughts or, or message of hope that you, you'd like our viewers to hear? Yeah, I love hope. Hope has always been my thing, if you will. Um, and so to quote another incredible <laughs> book called the Bible, maybe you've heard of it. Um, Paul talks so much about hope in um, the book of Romans. And this is my all time favorite verse, but he talks about how um, we are able to like boast of our affliction and that suffering produces endurance endurance produces character and character produces hope and so even in this time saint paul talks about going from suffering to hope through this um kind of timeline uh which is in romans chapter five but um just knowing that these small things like you we were talking about Lisa um, are such big ways for us to love and that mm. this is a time of hope this is not a time for despair um, yeah. our suffering is able to aid in the ways that we can help amen amen well thank you so much McLean for uh, giving us your time yes. and your word and your witness to faith um, it's all uh, for the glory of God. Um, yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you, Louisa. Hi there, Rian. Thank you for your time and welcome to Hope From Home. Thank you so much for having me. You currently work at uh, St. Mary's, our, our Lady of Seven Sorrows, my home, home, home church, home parish. Um, and with your work, you last year you had the opportunity to create uh, the first ever community garden. Can you tell me what inspired you to start the community garden? What was its impact? Uh, and what did you hope to achieve when you started it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess in the past couple of years at St. Mary's Church, we've been really putting a special focus on on how we can serve the poor in our neighborhood. A bit of context, we are right smack dab in the middle of Kitchener, like um, surrounded by social services and many people who we have many resources that we could help out and support. And so there are two reasons that we started the garden. The first was, yeah, we wanted to see how can we 
support our neighbors downtown. And so to that end, we ended up, um, I chatted with some of the local organizations asking them, could you use a community garden? Would this be helpful for the folks you support? Like, um, and we ended up uh, making a connection with an organization called Circle of Friends, which I can tell you more about later. Um, but the second reason that we decided a garden was important was, I think especially since Pope Francis came out with the encyclical Laudato Si, we thought it was very important to, to make the bridge between the church and nature. And even just having the garden out, and it's, it's right along a main street, you can see it right up against the massive church building, this thriving vegetable garden. We wanted people to make that natural connection between our faith and ecology and show that the two go hand in hand. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Um, actually, when I was new to the area and first went there, when I first met you, I don't know if you remember, uh, when I was leaving, you said, hey, make sure you, you you go visit the community garden. And I actually got two peppers out of there and they were absolutely fantastic. So oh, good. <laughs> yeah, that's been, that's been one of the neat things about our garden. So just to give a bit more context, we, we function a bit differently than a classic community garden where, you know, you would have this big plot of land and it's divided into individual plots and people come on their own time and do their own thing for their plot. What we decided to do is we're working with Circle of Friends and they work with folks who have lived experience of homelessness, now have housing, but a huge issue that they're facing now is isolation. And so what they're trying to do is help these people integrate into society. And we thought perhaps we can have this garden, make a partnership with Circle of Friends they bring some of their folks and we bring some of our parishioners and we get together once a week um, to work on the garden together. So it is really, truly a, like community, community garden. Um, mm. And so we've also decided with the produce um, to just show radical generosity and try and image God's generosity um, and just have it as a pick your own produce. Anyone can come by and, and do some foraging from our garden. So I'm glad you. I'm glad you got your peppers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're wonderful, and it's it's great to to know and see um, how Lidauto Sea impacted the the garden. Like it, the whole thing is all about our common home, and just it, it was wonderful to see a community garden really uh, adopt that. Um, in your in in your opinion, uh, what are the other ways that the the concept of the community garden and how it was executed, um, what, how did else did it relate to that encyclical? Mm -hmm. A huge way that the encyclical um, shaped our work and our approach to this project was Pope Francis. Um, he made this connection between serving the earth and caring for the earth and caring for the poor. And for myself, I mean, I've, I've always like caring for the earth has been a huge part of my heart and who I am. It's been very dear to me, but I've never really associated it with caring for the poor. He says, we can't listen to the cry of the earth without hearing the cry of the poor. And so it was very important for us that while we work with the earth and try and tend this garden, that we do so in a way that helps those who are vulnerable. And so we did that by, um, yeah, by working with folks who are facing isolation and have had housing instability. Um, and so we wanted to foster relationship with them more so than care about the quality of the spinach that was coming up. Um, yeah, so that's, that's one of the huge ways that we tried to incorporate Laudato Si. The second one, um, Pope Francis talks about how, how we don't have an absolute right for public property and that in, yeah, we have this sense that, you know, we can own land and be dominators over it and just, you know, let it do what we will. But, 
But with our garden, as I mentioned before, and this whole pick your own produce, anyone can come and take and give. And we try to, yeah, to show that the land is not just ours, that it, like, it's not just St. Mary's. It's, you know, the school board next door, the person sitting on the street corner, anyone can come and take. Um, yeah. That's, that's, it's great. And, and, and being able to actually fully see that was, uh, has been pretty remarkable for, like for myself, because I, I hadn't seen it in, in that sort of way, in that sort of state before. So it was, it was great to see. Um, mm -hmm. We always like to, to ask people, uh, ask you this, uh, what is your hope for people during this time? I would say my hope for people, especially in regards to Laudato Si, is is to see creation, the earth, the birds, the plants, the bugs, and to be able to see God in it, to see the goodness of each of these things in and of itself, and not just for what it can do for us. That's another theme that Pope Francis brings up in the document that, that we often think, you know, a cow is good because we love steak, but the cow is good because God created it and made it good. And the cow, in some way, reveals God's self to us in a way that a chicken can't or a blade of grass can't. There is, yeah, my hope for people is that we take this time to really read God's revelation in the book of creation that he's given us. Because we do have the time. <laughs> <laughs> That that we do. We definitely have that that period of discernment. So I I, I agree with you. I hope that uh, people take this time to to see that goodness um, in others and themselves, because that that's important too. To one has to feel that they can do, they are good in order, uh, and know that they can do good. So I really yeah, we are part of creation, part of creation that is good. So I totally agree. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time and all of your wise words and your wisdom. And I hope uh, going forward that uh, you'll be able to get another garden go uh, going soon with, uh, in spite of all this that's going on. And I hope that others will follow suit. So yeah. thanks so much. Thank you. It's been a blast. Father Josh. Thanks so much for being here with us. Thanks for joining at Hope From Home. First of all, I would like to ask you, how are you and how was this quarantine? Yeah, uh, thank you for this invitation to join you. I'm speaking to you from the Vatican and I spend most of the quarantine in our community in the Vatican. As I tell my friends, well protected in the shadow for Francis. Yeah, and uh, we have been working, you know, mostly from here though, like from last two weeks, uh, my our offices of the of the dicastery for for promoting integral human development. We are say two kilometers from here, so I've been going there like most of the days. Uh, it has been a peaceful time, a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would like uh, to start our interview uh, talking about the article that you wrote uh, recently, and the title is Seven Reflection on the Coronavirus Emergency from an Ecological Perspective." Uh, in this article, there are a lot of things. Uh, probably we are, you know, we don't have so much time for going through all these yeah. things. But uh, first of all, what prompted you to write this article? Yeah, what really prompted me, you know, like it was already in the, it was already in the month of March, and at the Vatican, we were thinking of creating a COVID nineteen commission, uh, which Pope Francis wanted. And our dicastery was, you know, asked to lead it. So the, my colleague and friend, Padre Augusto Zampini, who is the coordinator of this commission, asked me, can you do something from the perspective of ecology? And even before he asked me, I, I was feeling the urge and the necessity to offer an ecological, I would say a deeper reflection in the light of Laudato Si, because I thought uh, the only superficial or, you know, reflections were coming out, but it's in the initial stages. So we thought it was important to offer a Laudato Si perspective. So that's what really got me into writing this 
after it just flew, I just began and I had no idea what to write and they prayed and, you know, just started and, and it ended up with seven points, you know, so yeah. What lesson uh, are we learning, you know, uh, from, you know, this pan pandemic, from this situation and uh, what's the connection that we can do between Laudato Si and this crisis? Yeah. Uh, allow me to say at least three three things we can learn about the pandemic from the perspective of Lauda to see. The first is about the the ecological roots of the crisis. You know that if the if our planet is not healthy, we cannot be healthy. And uh, many people now probably more articles are coming out. Uh, have, have, we're ignoring the ecological roots of the problem. It's like, you know, when we have cancer, it's true that we run fever and, you know, other symptoms, but it's not sufficient to take a paracetamol to bring the fever down. You have to go and uh, diagnose the deeper roots of the crisis. And, you know, pandemics or like COVID-19 have been happening, uh, these sort of sick diseases for the last, 30 years or so, like, like we had some over 300 cases, you know, and that in a way goes back to the destruction of biodiversity, that we are degrading Earth's ecosystems. Uh, and uh, due to, for several reasons, for wildlife trading, for deforestation, uh, and at a deeper level for the economic model we are following. You know, we, we need to keep the GDP growing and we cut down our forests, we go on exploiting our natural resources. So the moment we disturb the ecosystem, the natural world, it pays back, you know, uh, for Francis always repeats this quotation. He said that also on the Earth Day, 22nd of April, God always forgives. We humans, we can at times we forgive, but nature never forgives, you know. So we cannot tamper with nature. So the first reflection is about the ecological roots. The second reflection is about what Laudatosi says, that we are all interrelated and interdependent. And we saw like, you know, if uh, it's enough that someone is sick, all of us are affected. And uh, the lockdown is an expression of what we have been going through. Uh, and I would say even going deeper, uh, allow me to build on the first reflection, how the, the, the root causes are connected. So if we disturb ecology, then it falls on the economics. Then we have uh, consequences for human well-being, especially the idea of health, like, you know. Uh, so there is there is inter interconnection interrelatedness, and also maybe a sign of the, the 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 other side of the coin is that to respond to the crisis, it's not sufficient to have economic stimulus packages. So we need to respond at various levels. We need to change our economy. We need to create a more sustainable world. We need to grow in solidarity. So so everything is interrelated. That no one is an island. You know. So we are in it together. And the third thing I think we can learn from, uh, from Laudato Si in the context of this pandemic is that beautiful word that Pope Francis uses in Laudato Si called care. The title of the encyclical is Laudato Si on care for our common home. And these days, I mean, again, the positive thing uh, you know, uh, the silver lining in the clouds is we saw people caring, our own healthcare professionals, nurses and doctors and, and others, and also those who were guaranteeing essential services, the police and even those who are cleaning and you know, those who are in the supermarkets, you know, people who care. And lots of stories are coming about how people have been caring for one another. I think this is care is uh, it's not the virtue of the weak it's a virtue of the and we have we have seen it when people care we survive and uh, this is one thing which uh, for francis invites us to grow in this attitude of caring caring for the earth caring for our brothers and sisters and especially the weakest amongst us you know uh, it, it, i always think like you know in a family when a child falls sick the entire family comes around the child I think as humanity, we need to put the weakest at the center and start caring. And when we care, we can flourish, we can survive, 
we can overcome any, any, any challenge, including the COVID-19. Sure. Uh, in the article, you say that this crisis is anyway an opportunity for a new beginning. What do you mean exactly? Yeah, uh, it is, you know, like uh, also the word crisis in Greek literally means opportunity. So on the one hand, it's a very difficult moment, but I, we shouldn't forget that behind or in every crisis, there is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to begin a, begin a new since I was emphasizing the ecological perspective. We know that, you know, with the climate crisis 2018, scientists told us that we have something like 12 years to turn things around. And we are seeing the impacts of the climate crisis. This morning, a friend called me from the Philippines. You know, the, the month of May it never happens, but they're having a hurricane there. And uh, he said one of his friends died, unfortunately, like, you know, so we have been crossing, you know, physical thresholds and, and also the way we are, we are depleting natural resources, our economic model of consumerism. Yeah. And we are going at a neck break speed, like, you know, and, 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 and this crisis, this, the, the pandemic stopped us, made us reflect and is telling us it's an opportunity now, not to go back to the old way of living that was totally unsustainable, but, and also the, the unjust, Part of it, you know, we were plundering the planet, but we are also plundering, ravaging the bodies of the poor. We would produce produce goods in Bangladesh or poor countries, and 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 paying hardly anything. And we have been, and the 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 inequality has been scandalously increasing around the world. So we cannot go back to that world. And it's an opportunity to create a more just, more sustainable more fraternal world. And I see this as a beautiful opportunity and I pray that we don't miss it. We don't have another opportunity. You know, we have another decade or so uh, for climate crisis, almost in also the ecological level. So uh, this is an opportunity that we need to make the best of. Father Josh, it was a pleasure. Thanks for joining us at Hope From Home and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, thank you. God bless, thank you. And that's all for today on this episode of Hope From Home, the Laudato Si edition. That was a lot of good information today. Tell us how you're celebrating Laudato Si week. Are you part of any community garden or do you have your own garden at home? Also, do you pay attention to what you wear and where it comes from? And what did you think of those Laudato Si lessons we're learning during this time? Share your thoughts with us by following Salt and Light Media on all of our social media platforms and commenting with the hashtag Hope From Home. Don't forget to tell us where you are finding hope during this time and how you're celebrating Laudato Si. Remember, if you miss any part of the episode, you can always rewatch them on saltandlighttv.org slash hope from home. We hope that these stories inspire you to stay positive and remind you that we're all still connected through hope.